I've always wanted to learn how to render characters. I'm an artist, I think I'm good at it. My characters are always simplified and like shape heavy and focusing more on the design rather than how to render the character. But I've always admired people who can add shape and form and lighting to their character designs. And every time I do it, it just like doesn't how do I say? It doesn't look good. I'm always so scared of the ugly part of the process that I don't even try. My drawings have a little bit more rendering than they used to have, but I'd like to speed run it so I'm just at the, the final boss level of rendering. So my goal by the end of this video is to be able to render faces with realistic lighting and realistic form and shape and skin tones. Doing all this in my own style to really enhance the type of artwork and the flow that I already have going on. What's my weaknesses? Well, I can't shade noses. I always have the hardest time understanding the planes, the shading underneath the nostrils. I can't paint eyes. There's not enough form or volume. This is what gets the audience to really connect with the character. So if the eyes are flat, then the rest of the painting is flat. But what are my strengths in red? I think that I can already do lips pretty well. It's always like the funnest part to paint for me. So we're not starting from, from ground zero. So before I started, I looked up a bunch of YouTube videos. I gathered a bunch of references from artists that I really admire. And I started analyzing how other people render skin and how they put all these colors in and how they do the forms of the shading and the lighting. And let me tell you, it is confusing and I don't know how they did it, but let's, let's go through this together. Okay, so I start my very first piece and I use a cute model reference that really goes with my style and I start rendering it a little bit more than I'm used to. I was really proud of this piece. I was like, I already know how to do this. Why am I even doing this challenge? And then at the very end, I realized that I took such an easy way out because the reference has studio lighting. So it's not like I could really play with different planes as much. And also I simplified it so much. I didn't add any of that realism that I was looking for. I was too scared to make something ugly that I ended up just making it look like all my other artwork. Although I did something a little interesting with the nose. I feel like I don't usually render noses that detailed. So that's one step that I did and I added like a little detail in the eyes. So this is like my first baby step piece that I made. <laughs> Painting number two. This is a really cool piece. I made a video about it earlier you can check out, but it is not rendered. <laughs> I played it way too safe and I was too scared to go further with it. The shirt's really stylized, the colors are really fun, but I feel like I'm hiding behind these fun colors and some like fun glossy highlights instead of actually defining form. It's a cool piece in itself, but this isn't the goal I'm going for. I want to level up 100% instead of 10%. But I did learn to add orange to the edge of a shadow. So it gives your cool shadows less of a dead muted look and it adds just a little bit of pop to it. Piece number three, two steps forward, one step back. I was so focused on making this rendered piece the same way that I make the rest of my pieces, which is not the same process. Like my process is very straightforward that every line I put down is the final line and it looks like the final piece really early on. But I've yet to learn that when you're painting a piece like this, it has to go through an ugly phase before getting to that final look. It's not gonna look from point A to point B. There's a lot of directions that you have to go before that. So this piece does not turn out. I didn't know what brushes to use. All my methods weren't working. I was trying to stylize it at the same time and the hair was just so out of my wheelhouse. I just like have never painted hair any type of realistically before. And I just like couldn't find structure in almost anything. The nose and the eyes and the masseters, just like everything. It looked flat. I didn't end up finishing it. I kind of gave up and I was really frustrated. So I started going through Procreate and I started playing around with the brushes, not sure which one that works. Do oil brushes work better? Does just like sketch brushes work better? I need something to like mix and soften, but I just couldn't really figure it out. Painting number four. So at this point I'm frustrated, but while I'm watching TV, I kind of find a little reference that I think is cute and I start very low pressure, start painting it. I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'm too hard on myself. Maybe I should just go in with no thoughts, head empty, and maybe this will turn out differently. I'm thinking because the exposure is really high on this reference image that it'll be easier to understand planes. It's more like lighting versus shadow. There's not a lot of ambiguity. But once again, I'm so frustrated. There's just like no textures on this piece and I end up rushing it because I just want to finish it because I'm like, this is bogus. So I gave up, but wait, let's take a break for a second and hear about the sponsor of today's video. Wondershare Filmora is a wonderful editing 
editing program that I literally spent hours playing around in because it was so much fun. There are so many tools that you can use to edit YouTube videos, TikToks, Reels, you name it. And there's templates for everything. You don't need to be an advanced editor to figure it out. It's so simple to use, perfect if you're scared to make the jump into editing because it's intimidating. I was most excited to use the AI cutout feature. And let me just show you how easy it is to remove the background of a video. All you gotta do is go to the smart cutout option of your video and then just draw over the person you wanna cut out. You could change your color, the way that it's transparent. You could play with the edge feathers and the thickness. And then all you do is click start smart cutout and it does it for you and it's that easy. Look at this. Another really cool tool that I used is the motion tracking. So you basically just click the motion tracking button onto your clip and then you make the box follow the thing you want to motion track. Click start and it does it for you. I wanted to add a little bit of writing and then you simply track the element and that's easy, it's so fast, look at you go. There are so many cool features like screen recording, auto reframe, batch edit, AI copywriting, but the funnest part is to explore on your own. Wondershare Fillmore is having a live stream event to showcase creators and show how they produce their content. I suggest checking out Landon By The Way's workshop on April 21st at 7 p.m. There's a link in the description to join the live stream or try Wondershare Fillmore yourself. Thanks Wondershare for sponsoring this video. Painting number five. So I move over to Photoshop. Procreate's not doing it for me. I'm thinking maybe a program that I'm more familiar with, a program that has more tools, more options. So I, I kind of back up a little bit and I decide to do a study from another artist that I find does rendering really well in their own style. So I decide to study Edowado Dono Art. You can find their page linked in the description. So I'm really backing up to really analyze how other artists stylize and use color and shading and lighting. So first I trace the piece, I add flat colors. I notice how much purple and oranges that he uses in his piece, how it like kind of edges some shapes and stuff like that. And that's really interesting. How these vibrant colors just like are on the very edge of each shape that he makes. Highlights are really bloomed with a saturated orange. The hair is really simplified with just a few strokes that indicate some shine. And there's a lot of like accent and fun colors that pop little things here and there. There's a lot of hard transitions and really like intentional softness where softness needs to be. My version doesn't have a lot of texture. I'm still kind of figuring out what brushes work for rendering a piece, but I feel like this really grounded myself and was a good starting point that I should have done a long time ago. Painting number six. This reference portrait has some really interesting lighting. It has warm lighting with like cool bounce light that I thought would be a really good lighting study for me. But once again, I just like couldn't figure out what brushes to use. Like, like I feel like that was really holding me back, but it's also this like false idol that like, oh, once I have the perfect brushes, I'm gonna be able to recreate these paintings perfectly like everybody else, but that's, that's not how it works. So I stylized the character and I tried to apply what I learned from my previous study. I analyzed where the cool tones are, where the warm shadows are, where the cool shadows are. I always flicked between black and white, but I'm still so frustrated the way the direction is going. Everything's way too angular. The colors aren't really the same. I didn't want it to feel muddy. I feel like if I were to use the same colors, it would it would feel muddy because it's so, such a cool toned painting. And I once again just couldn't figure out the planes of the eyes. They looked so flat as well as like the nose just like was way too sharp and angular. I just couldn't get the planes figured out. Even the thing that I thought I was good at, lips. I, I didn't get the lips right either. Okay, painting number seven. So I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to go back to basics. And we're talking about a black and white study. If there are three steps to a painting, value, black and white, color, and then their stylization, I did not break those three pieces down. Now I gotta break it down. So I looked up a few artists on how they transition from grays to lights to darks. And I was looking up Sam Does Art. He uses a lot of color, shadow, and light to make a lot of realistic lighting scenarios for his characters. I joined his Patreon to download Download some of his brushes to kind of bring me back to like a studying point of view where I'm studying how other people do their art and try to implement that into my own artwork. I watch some of his videos to understand his process a little bit better. He lays all his colors and his tones down before going into details. That's the opposite of what I was doing. I was really tunnel visioning on one element of it or adding lighting at the very end. But I have to really look at the bigger picture and try to get the whole thing kind of grounded before I start adding details. So taking one element, the value, and studying it really guided me to help understand how this type 
of painting works. And then once I understand black and white, then I can move on to color and stylization. So at this point, I am busy. I'm a busy bee. I was really frustrated with this challenge. I feel like I was going nowhere. I feel like my paintings weren't improving. And that's why I've always given up in the past. I take a break from these portrait studies. And around the corner is a convention that I usually sell my artwork at. So as I was preparing some of these paintings, I looked at my Wednesday Adams illustration that I made maybe like a few months ago when Wednesday was coming out. And I realized just how ugly it was. <laughs> so I decided to update the rendering with what I learned so far. And not only did I just like add a few more details to make it look more like Wednesday, I started rendering the eyes a little differently and I fixed the nose completely. I can't even believe that I painted the nose that way before. I added lighting and just a, a few more realistic touches. And then I see how far I've actually come in this rendering challenge. In a few short months, I was able to take this really crappy painting and turn it into something a lot nicer. And this was like a turning point that really motivated me to start painting again. Painting number eight. So I was going through Pinterest to find reference images for my next portrait and I stumbled across this one. And I noticed that I saw this before and two artists that I follow use this piece as a study. And I was like, I should join that train. So I put up these two artists paintings as a little bit of a reference and a study guide on how they use breaststrokes and how they kind of analyzed the portrait and how they kind of turned it into their own. Having this guidance really guided me into creating a much better piece. I'm able to notice more how the artists really noticed the subtle changes in color on the face or the different planes or where the shadows meet the light, where to exaggerate colors and where to soften shadows. And I also feel like this reference pose itself is a really good beginner pose, well at least for me, because I find that front-facing poses are are a lot more challenging because they're just like so much flatter that if you mess up your rendering it's much easier to tell that it's it's bad and also because the eyes in a profile like I said I struggle with eyes and when you have a front-facing piece the eyes are at the forefront if you mess it up then you mess it up but here the eyes are a lot more of an indication of an eye so it's a lot easier and also because the silhouette is sideways a lot of what gives volume to this piece is the silhouette itself and i find it's a lot more dynamic of a reference to go off of so this was definitely a turning point and i feel like i learned a lot from this piece and having previous art pieces as a little bit of a guidance painting number nine so I decided to stylize this piece a bit. Since I successfully painted something in black and white, and then I successfully added colors, then I decided to try to stylize a little bit. In this reference piece, there's clear indication of highlights, and I feel like that's a really easy starting point for me. I tried to add a little more orange hues, a little more blues where I can in the skin tone, and I feel like I'm starting to head into the right direction. The eyes feel a little bit flat, but other than that, I feel like this was a really successful piece, and I'm even starting to get good at drawing ears, which is a shock. <laughs> Painting number 10. This is my first front-facing face since the beginning of this challenge. First of all, I find that front-facing faces are kind of a cop-out. Don't at me in the comments. There's just like not enough personality or fun things happening in the piece that I like it. That's why I always like to do side profiles or three quarter views. But like I said, I'm also avoiding it because it's easy to make it look flat. But now that I understand rendering a little bit more, I'm gonna give it a go. I really focus on creating the whole picture, really getting the tones and the values correct before moving on to details. I wasn't afraid to make the piece ugly before it started to look nice again. I start to get a little bit lost, especially in the hair, and then I kind of realized that it's not about it being realistic, it's about stylizing it, but creating a lot more realism in the way that the lighting is and the shading is. And that helps me to keep some really fun angles and shapes in the hair and kind of flatten it a little bit. There are a lot of blobs by the end of this piece, but there's also like not a lot of texture in it. There's a lot of changes in value and tone. I think it's better to go a little too far because then you could pull back rather than not going far enough and then not being sure how to push further. I tried to play with some accent colors, like some yellows in the eyes and a little bit of blues here and there to make it a little bit more interesting. Painting number 11. I decide I understand values. I kind of am getting the hand at rendering a little bit, but I need to apply to my own style a little bit more. Because previously I'm tracing and maybe liquefying it a little bit just to change it a little bit more cartoony. Tracing's easy but creating your own piece is very hard. I choose this portrait because I really like the orange in her cheek and in her neck, and I feel like I can accentuate it and play with colors, and I also like her eyes. I feel like there's a little bit of character in her. 
My first mistake is being unhappy with the sketch and still moving forward. I don't feel like I kept what makes this character interesting. I'm disappointed in this piece because there's just like not a lot of character, there's just like not anything unique or interesting in it, I find. Like when you isolate pieces like the mouth and the eyes and the nose, I feel like on their own they're good, but together it's just kind of basic. Maybe it falls flat because lack of texture, because I'm getting bored with the painting process and I just don't have enough creative energy in me to do this right now. But I definitely see that, you know, my nose rendering has improved, the ears have improved, even how I stroke hair and eyes have improved a lot since I started this process. And finally, painting number 12. I think this portrait would be fun to simplify in my style. I've worked with sunlight and maybe some more moody lighting, but I haven't tackled studio lighting since almost my first piece. So I really wanted to try to capture the essence of this portrait while creating the character in my own style. I try to pull back from over rendering and just kind of put the shadows down that are necessary to the piece. The piece is pretty, you know, the lips are nice, the nose is nice. I, I feel like I'm finally learning how to render the eyes but still keep it stylized. But altogether, it's just like not as exciting since I made this piece or this piece. Like these two are my favorite from the challenge. Maybe that's because I added fun accent colors or maybe it was because it was the first time that I painted where it finally started to look nice. Or maybe it's just because I've been doing this for too long and painting portraits every day and I'm very sick of it. <laughs> so I think what's best for me is to take a break from painting portraits and that's why this is the last painting. Sometimes you really gotta step away from your art in order to come back and really understand how it looks like to you. So let's see if I hit my goal. So my goal was learn how to render faces with realistic lighting, shadows, colors to enhance my stylistic artwork. And yeah, I, I really do think I did that. And next I want to learn how to add more texture. I want my lighting to be a little bit more exciting and add little pops of really fun colors to make the piece not look so flat. And I also want to learn how to incorporate some of these rendering styles into my future artwork and not just when I'm painting portraits. I still have so much to learn. I'm glad to have taken the time to learn something that I wanted to try for so long, but I was scared of failing before I could even try to do it. And that's how I learned how to paint faces in a relatively short amount of time. Let me know what your favorite painting is. And also I'd love to hear who your favorite artists are when it comes to stylized rendering. Maybe I'll be on the top of the list soon. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching. See you later.